Major inventions fall roughly into two categories. Things that take seemingly forever to evolve into something useful, like the computer, or things that seem to proliferate in our world in the blink of an eye, like smartphones. Two of the world's most famous inventors seem to change the world overnight, when innovations for flight happened almost at the speed of light. From 1903, when the Wright brothers conducted the first successful airplane flight in their plane, the Flyer, to the Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969, when the impossible was again met with possibility, the trajectory of aviation has been swift. From its birth to what some may regard as its pinnacle so far, there is a span of only about 66 years. Matt Anderson is the curator of transportation at the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation in Detroit. This is the front entrance of the Wright Cycle Shop run by Wilbur and Orville Wright. But I want to show you something in the back, though. Okay. The public would have gone through the front where the store was, but the brothers did all the work on their gliders and planes back here. All right. It was here that two brothers would change the world. How quickly did aviation become something regular and relatively safe? Fairly quickly, you know, by 1908, 1910, you've got regular demonstration flights, and then by 1918, you've got airmail service, and then by the mid-1920s, there's scheduled airline passenger service, not too different from what we'd recognize today. So that's not a very long time. No, you're looking at uh, maybe 20, 25 years at most. That first flight lasted 12 seconds, and the flyer hit a top speed of about 30 miles per hour. The Wright brothers then disappeared for a time, intent on seeking patents for the intellectual property that they developed as a part of their airplane invention. When were they back in the headlines? They came roaring back in 1908. Other people were flying at that time. The Wrights kind of came what seemed out of nowhere and just had tremendous success. They were flying longer than anyone else. Some of those flights more than an hour long, higher and most importantly with an incredible degree of control. Within the next decade, huge leaps were made in airplane technology. I think of the Wright Dayton monoplane from 1920. When you look at that aircraft, it's a single wing, and it has wheels for landing gear, but retractable landing gear on this aircraft. And it's got an enclosed cockpit, too. The pilot is inside now. And that was an airplane capable of not 30 miles an hour, not 47, but 190 miles an hour. So tremendous increase in speed. These two brothers, great pioneers. Another great pioneer, Neil Armstrong, first man on the moon, came here. Yes, and you know, Armstrong himself was from Ohio, just like the Wright brothers. And uh, in 1979, just 10 years after his moon landing, he came here to the Wright Cycle Shop. I think he felt a real connection to the Wright brothers. In fact, when he and, and Buzz Aldrin flew to the moon in 1969, they brought with them a few pieces of the original Wright flyers, a wonderful symbolic gesture. Boy, if, if the Wrights had only been alive then, what do you think they would have thought? You know, I think they would have been astounded at how quickly it all changed, and I think they would have been excited to think, well, we've gone to the moon, what comes next? 1903 to 1969, that's 66 years. For the people who watch the show, for some of them, that seems like a long time. It's not. It, not at all. Amazing, wow. Never underestimate the importance of a single achievement. It could one day launch a thousand spaceships.